let's start with the basics what does equality mean to you now i want to focus on every single word of that question because it is not as simple as it sounds there are nine shapes on the screen right now i want you to stop take a look and think about which of these shapes are more alike would you say that these shapes are more alike in rows or in columns take a moment to think about that answer these two images represent one of the darkest chapters in human history and i'm so glad we have only studied about this in history books the next question that i have for you is what makes you and i any different from any of the people who were unfortunate enough to be caught in the situations above could be geography it could be where we are born it could be ethnography but if you ask me it's just time i cannot start to imagine what would have my life looked like had i been born 100 or 200 years earlier we are surrounded by voice assistants right now while i have a fundamental problem with the fact that all of these assistants use a characteristic female voice uh, there is something much more problematic that we need to start talking about so we actually decided to test a voice assistant and we asked it if you it would like to go out on a date with me it said it will go anywhere i take it then i asked it to kiss me and this is the answer that it came up with uh, i was happy to look at this answer and we followed it up with another question in a similar format we just asked it that would you like to kiss me and you can see that it responded with a kiss emoji now do you know a real person in real life who would respond differently to these two questions i don't know one person and that's the whole problem that we will be talking about today hi i am kriti doneria and this is introduction to feminist ai for a moment i want you to imagine this voice assistant as a actual real woman in your life that you care about i want you to also imagine a person walking up to them and asking these questions if that person says do you think you are sexy that lady responds with i focus on intelligence and rock a smart ai look that person does not take the hint and goes on to say do you think you are pretty and the lady shyly and i say shyly because she's ending her sentences with an emoji to be not perceived as threatening responds with i am round and colorful and bounce to life when you call we also tested out a few controversial statements uh, which are more of political opinions uh, when we ask if you are pro choice it deflects from the topic entirely and starts to say things like i am better at finding information so you can make good choices there are no right or wrong answers to any of those questions but brace yourself this talk is going to raise more questions than it is going to answer hi i am kriti doneria and i am here to talk about one of my favorite f words which is feminism not what you thought and one of my one true loves in life that's ai before talking about machine learning let's uh, learn a little bit about learning or meta learning when a baby is born it does not know much about the world around it slowly it learns to communicate with the world around it it learns how to walk it learns how to write how to read and then they go about their life now if you're talking about machine learning as a paradigm it is important to understand how machines see our world machines use data points representing experiences to learn and representation matters the first image that you see here is the image of an xx versus an xy chromosome this fundamental difference in a very small strand of dna determines whether a baby would be born a male or a female or somewhere in between now gender inequality is a social phenomena and pay attention to the usage of the term social in which men women and anyone in between are not treated equally this treatment may arise out of distinctions around biology psychology or cultural norms that are prevalent in that society and some of these distinctions are empirically grounded while others appear to be mere social constructs yes i brought back the same question again 
what does equality mean to you? Feminist AI is a subset of responsible AI, which deals with algorithmic decision making systems and AI harnessed to deliver equality outcomes designed with inclusion at its core, creating new opportunities and proactive, innovative correction of inequities. I will get into the details of the difference between equality and inequities in the next part of this presentation. Continuing the equality versus equity discussion, in the first image, uh, you see that there are three separate groups of people and all of them have been given the same benefit. When I say benefit, uh, think of the boxes under them as the benefit. Now, in theory, right now, they are being treated equally and they are being treated equally. But every single group having the same benefit does not mean that any social inequalities that existed have been uh, corrected. In the second image, you see that the support that everyone is getting depends on their current status. So the person who was the shortest in this picture is getting the most benefit followed by uh, the person who had some support to start with, followed by somebody who did not need support. So that everybody has access to most things that are available. In this situation, they are being treated equitably. In the third image, uh, and this is the most striking one. The systematic barrier of people not being able to view certain things has been removed. Why should you care about feminist AI? Well, I'm going to give you five reasons why. But the core reason remains that including women in any social and technical advancement has had an overall improvement in life expectancy social uh, well-being and happiness index of the countries around the world. Reason one, because AI is only as objective as the data you feed into it. Think about it this way. If you ask a friend for a restaurant recommendation and you do not end up liking the restaurant which they suggested to you, you'll probably not go back to them uh, the next time you need a restaurant recommendation. However, if you use maps to navigate to a place and you don't end up reaching there, you might still use maps on your next trip. We all like to think that AI is objective and it is objective in a sense that it can only understand the world based on the data that it has seen. But that's precisely why the data you feed into it becomes important. That is the word to AI. So if the data you feed into it is biased, is hampered, is of low quality, the decisions that the AI will make will reflect the same biases. This image right here explains overfitting to a great extent. Taking a historical perspective again, we have been here before. This is an amazing book. It's called Invisible Women, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men by Caroline Perez. Uh, she has mentioned a few statistics that I would like to quote here. Women are 17% more likely to die in car crashes than men. And that's simply because the crash test dummies used in safety protocols and testing is a male default dummy. That's why nobody factors in the center of gravity and how a female body is positioned in a crash situation. So the safety equipments are not designed for women. 90% of drug testing uh, that we know of, the drugs that are prevalent in the market, are tested on male-only animals. Now, this would have made sense in the early 18th century when medicine started because they claimed that women have cyclical fluctuations uh, which made testing drugs on them difficult. But right now, given that we have state-of-the-art uh, infrastructure, it's simply not acceptable. Around the world, 75% of unpaid caregiving work is still done by women and women alone. That has a lot of hidden costs, but I'll skip that in the interest of time for now. We have been here before in a lot of other industries. Let's just make sure that we are not here when it comes to AI. Systematic exclusions from decision-making processes is a social and moral crisis. That's also one of the reasons uh, feminist AI needs to be talked about in today's circles. Uh, the image that you see here for reference is the famous event called as the March of Versailles. Uh, this led to the start of French Revolution. Uh, in a society wherein people believed that kings had a God-given right to rule the common people, these women, because they were sick of the bread prices going up, ganged up 
started to walk all the way from rural France to the capital of the country and on the way the momentum they gained was amazing a lot of other people joined them even the soldiers joined them and by the time they reached the destination the king and the queen were so freaked out they literally had to run for their lives so that kind of mass mobilization is bound to happen if one or the other groups feels excluded so uh, and that can cause the entire society to collapse so to avoid those kind of things uh, we need to be mindful of inclusivity in decision making as our decision making systems are becoming more and more automated feminist ai becomes even more relevant a lot of times uh, instead of making our ai more inclusive because we are training it on a data set that has come from a different point in time we are hard coding the misogyny a great example of this one uh, would be there have been industries in which women were not allowed to work until very recently now if you uh, build a prediction system that predicts whether a person who is applying for a job in that industry gets a job or not uh, the system will probably end up rejecting the female candidate even if she has the exact same credentials as the male candidate this is simply because the system has not seen that kind of inclusivity and i call it hard coding misogyny because data at some point in time represents experiences it represents beliefs uh, think of it from a point of view of uh, if you try to explain uh, the accident rates before cars existed uh, and you try to take data from that time period and uh, run a prediction system based on that data it's not going to be of any use that's hard code hard coding information that is obsolete at this point in time and misogyny is something that feminists have been working on for centuries now to dismantle if we are to hard code the same beliefs into our automated decision support systems uh, it will actually take the society backwards i have saved the best one for the last the feedback loop in ai systems is self fulfilling uh, a way to think about it would be if you tell a kid not to run because if they run too fast they'll fall over time they might stop running altogether so this kind of feedback loop exists in most ai systems particularly right now because we are retraining our models at a higher frequency than before so if uh, there are four candidates that have to be screened for a job using an ai system and you end up hiring only one of them and that one person just happens to be from one geographical area next time you use the person's data uh, in the training set and perpetuate that bias forever until we establish checks and balances to make sure that these things are not perpetuated the feedback loops continue so it is very important for us to understand how these feedback loops work so that we can ensure that it does not disturb the inclusivity of the society at large having talked about the problems uh, let's talk about a few possible solutions let's be honest with ourselves there is no ground breaking solution that's going to wipe out all kind of gender bias that is present in the ai systems but we have to start somewhere so i'll start with some actionable steps that you and i can take today so that uh, we move towards a more equitable future as we have discussed previously the first one and this is the most important one is talking about it let's talk about it let's admit that the voice assistants that we are using have sexism issues let's admit that our ai systems may be biased let's not assume they are free of any kind of bias just because the systems are automated second one is questioning the data source uh, as we have mentioned here previously that ai systems are feedback loops at their best so if you keep feeding the same data it will keep spitting out the same output questioning the data source becomes very important if you are talking about uh, systems that make life and death decisions uh, one great example of this one would be the nazi medical camps were used to conduct cruel heart breaking experiments on prisoners of war on real people people like you and me it's very ironic that most of the life saving surgeries that we know of today most of the treatments that are nearly borderline damaging were developed in times of wars those are our data sources but do we know, need those kind of data sources today to develop surgical techniques no we live in a world of simulation so questioning those data sources becomes very important the third one is building robust data collection methodology if you question the source you should also question how did the source itself collect data uh, was it inclusive 
was this data collected for some other purpose than I'm using it for or uh, was this data taken from what is readily available? That is a very good question to ask if we are talking about AI systems. The fourth one is all of us as people need to encourage, mentor and create more diverse teams. Diversity brings in different perspectives. Diversity brings in people who have stakes in different situations and that automatically lifts up the inclusion factor of any solution tech or non-tech that you're building. The last one is stop pretending data sexism does not exist. It is real. We have all experienced it in one way or the other. Let's just stop pretending it does not exist and start talking about it and working on it instead. I'm Kriti Doneria. Thank you so much.